Hello, my name is Dean Crotover, and this is Current Buzz. Thank you for watching today. Today we have Karen Casella. She's a candidate for the Register of Deeds. You probably don't know what the registry does, but that's why she's here to explain, because she works in the office, and she's running uh, for candidate, and she's going to explain what the Registry of Deeds does and how many people work there and why she wants to be uh, the Register of Deeds. It's a six-year term. Uh, price, how much you get paid, I don't know. It's over 100000 I don't know the particulars, but, you know, I, I'll ask Karen. Thank you for coming, Karen. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you for having me, Dean. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. No problem. So the Register of Deeds, there's two in Middlesex County. There's North and South, and you want to be ahead of the North, right? Is well, I would be, yes. I want to run for, the for, uh, North office. For North. Yes. Uh, it's called the uh, Middlesex Northern County Register of Deeds. Correct. So what does the Register of Deeds do? What, wh why is so, it important? To so the Registry of Deeds, um, it's like the library of real estate records. If you purchase property, um, take out a mortgage, all those documents are recorded with us okay. at the registry. Um, homesteads, liens, if you don't pay your taxes, the city puts the lien on. Um, Anything to do with real estate, all those documents will be recorded with us. Okay. And it's if you own property, it's your largest asset. You want to make sure your title stays clear and clean. What, what do you mean by uh, clear and clean? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm learning when I did the research on it, I'm learning about it. So when you say clear and clean, what do you mean by... So um, for your title, which would be your deed to your property, okay. it has the meets and bounds on it. Um, tenancy clause. So once you purchase property lines, right? Which yeah, the yeah. meets and bounds. So there's a plan yeah. usually recorded with it. Um, probably could be 50 years old. But then you have your mortgage, you have your homestead. Um, you want to just make sure if you have a refi, you've paid that mortgage off, the original one. <clears throat> you want to make sure the discharge is recorded because now you have a new mortgage. If you don't record that discharge that mortgage still will act as a lien, even though you personally know that you took out that, you refied for a lower interest rate. Okay. If you don't have that discharge on record, those mortgages stay as an open lien against your property, which would cause it to have that cloud of okay. an issue. So uh, you want to, those are uh, things that you really have to kind of pay attention to. Uh, the lingo, refine, re, you mean refinance, right? Refinance, yeah, refinance, yes. Well, we no one's doing it now with the rates so high, but okay. when they were 2 and 3%, yeah, we were bombarded okay. with mortgages. Um, so we do need the Registry of Deeds, it's, and it's also public domain. A lot of people don't know that. Once you buy a home right. or any type of property, your name is on the property, and people can look it up in the computer. Absolutely. And how every, much you paid for it. Right. Every document that's recorded, it's public info. You can go online, see what they paid, who's on the deed, what their mortgage was for. What liens? What liens they have. Okay. Um, there's a document called an order of notice. If that's recorded, it means they some, at some point was delinquent on their mortgage. So that's the first part of a foreclosure process. Oh, okay. So there's so many documents. Yeah. I, I know that. I mean, if you don't when, pay the, the your, more um, I looked it up, I mean, the more I see that right. it's real technical stuff. If you don't pay your credit cards and they lien your property, they can take you to court. They can be issued an execution against you, and that gets recorded. And they, and that's how they put a lien on they your home. They put it right on the property. Okay. Yep. So if I if I build a new deck and I don't pay for the deck on my home, right? And it's let's say ten thousand dollars. The 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 builder could put a lien on my property. Right. Is that correct? Right. In other words, when you sell a property, they'll get money from the home. Right. Exactly. Okay. Oh yeah, he'll put the notice of contract, statement of claim. He'll. How does he do that? How's how's the builder do that? Well, hopefully the builder has you sign a contract. I see. I <laughs> so see. Okay. Once he has that signed contract, if you he does the work for you and you don't pay him, he'll take you to court, and then that judge will issue you him the lien, and he'll oh, have okay. that recorded against your property. So that way, if you do refinance or sell. He will get his money. Oh, I see. 
What happens if they go out of business? I mean, I mean, the company, let's say, goes out of business. That kind of puts it in a so there is a. World. It depends on what type of lien. If he puts an execution on, it's there's only it's good for six years. So if he doesn't bring it forward, then he'll have to. It's dissolved. Oh, I see. I'll remove. I see. Re that's up to. So yeah. Right. So I write titles. So I'll remove it from the title. Oh. Okay. But it still stays open, um, like against your um, credit report. We oh. will take it off of the property, but it's still there. It could come up in other, if you bought a car or whatnot, I see. I anything see. like that, but we don't keep it on the property title. I see, okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm trying the to get- The statue, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to, I mean, you, so, know, you know this stuff really well. Okay, so um, walk me through. I buy a house, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I go to the lawyer's office. Everything's done digitally now, so they, you don't have to go in to the register of deeds. You could do it from the lawyer's office, from what I understand now. Right. Okay? Yeah. So he electronically sends the deed and the mortgage over? He'll record an MLC. He wants What's to an MLC? I mean, a municipal let's lien not certificate. Get too I know. Yeah, so yeah. a municipal lien certificate from the town. So when you buy property, they want to make sure your water is paid, all the you know taxes are paid before it's sold. So oh, I understand. Okay, it'll yeah, just show a zero balance. So that gets recorded first. Then we have the deed and a mortgage. And if you do a homestead, that usually follows. Okay, all right. So and he, if he has Simplify or the software, then he can do it right <coughs> from his uh, office. Okay. So so. So do they also do the, uh, the homestead and explain what a homestead is, why a person should have a homestead on their, on their home. Right. A, lot, a lot of times, let's say people bought their home 30 years ago or 15 years ago and it wasn't done electronically. Because now I presume that if you do the deed, the mortgage, you automatically they do the homestead now? So the homestead, they don't do it automatically. There okay. is an automatic by law homestead on your property <coughs> in Massachusetts, and if you, it's a hundred, it's worth one hundred twenty-five thousand, which means someone can lien your property, but if it was for twenty thousand dollars, you technically have that homestead. So it protects you. It protects you. It does. It only protects you from being forced to sell your property. So that's people get confused. Oh, I see. Okay. They think they don't have to ever pay their debt. Because I have a homestead, <coughs> oh, but see. that's not how it works. Okay. It just protects you from being forced to sell, to pay that debt. You're still required. If, you, if someone liens your property and in three years you sell, you have to pay that debt, that, even if you had the homestead. It just protects you. I always say you almost become a prisoner in your own home. You don't have to pay it, but you're not going to be able to sell your house either without paying that. I see. Okay. So but if you if you fill out a homestead form itself, it's thirty-five dollars, and that protects you up to five hundred thousand. Oh wow! So it's well worth it. Yeah. And it's I sort of like an insurance policy, isn't it? Mm, well, it's. I mean, maybe on the same kind of. It's not this. You you definitely want to still keep your insurance. Right. It's just going to protect you from debtors. Means. Debtors. Exactly. All right. Yeah. In other words, credit cards. Are not right. Good. I mean, right. Because if obviously yeah. if there was a fire or whatnot, that homestead it won't matter. Yeah. But it's uh, but I just want to say, if you owe child support money, uh, the homestead's not going to help you. Right. You Absolutely. Exactly. Am I, am I right? And the mortgage. And so if you so that's the other thing. The homesteads. It's just debt. <coughs> It's not going to protect you from liens. It's not going to protect you from um, not paying your condo fees. There's so many. This just it's. There are different things that will not help you okay. on. But it's basically. I always would tell someone if you're financially upside down, you're having, you're struggling, pay that mortgage. The other stuff you can hold off on. But if you want to keep your home, make sure you're paying the mortgage. All right. Yeah. Speaking of that, I saw something. Um, you register foreclosure deeds, is that correct? Yes. What is a foreclosure deed? Explain that to me, because you know I'm just right. 
So a foreclosure <coughs> deed, um, it would be a deed that the person hasn't paid their <coughs> mortgage. Um, they couldn't get out of it. You know, once you start falling behind, it becomes a huge payment and they just couldn't, you know, right. get themselves out of it. So once the bank forecloses, that person will then lose the property. Um, anything after that mortgage, any liens, usually that you'll see a couple, they are responsible for. Property taxes, maybe that's a lien. So if you purchase <coughs> through an auction, <coughs> you're going to have to, you buy that from the mortgage company. So, but if you bought it and not the mortgage company, you are responsible for all those liens. Oh, okay. But it's a foreclosure deed. Um, the federal government, you know. Now, does the bank send you the deed, or the foreclosure deed? Or, the, or, or? No, so what happens is the attorney, whoever is representing, oh, yeah, the mortgage company will bring it in. Oh, I see. Yep. Bring it in. Electronically or here? No, both. Oh. Either or. They can right. do it le electronically, but, um, you know, we, we haven't seen too, too many lately. Oh, that's good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, good that's, uh, yeah, it's that's great. Yeah. Uh, so people are paying off their mortgages. Right. They're, yeah. And what happens when you pay off your mortgage? Does the bank give the owner a, a, a letter saying it's paid off and they have to deliver it to you, or does the so, bank send it to you initially? Right. So years ago, parties? right years ago, they used to send it right to us because the fee was ten dollars <coughs> oh, for a discharge. A lot of fees. Now the fee seventy five dollars. So usually, right now, when the bank pays off that mortgage. They send it to the homeowner. The homeowner will have to bring it to us, pay the seventy-five dollars. When is that? When did that change? Um, oh, it's you know? well. It used to be ten. Then it went to twenty-five. Then it went to, I think, forty-five. Now it's seventy-five. So, oh. yeah, they just you know when the um, state raises all their fees. Because they don't want to raise your taxes, well, they raise your fees. And uh, these yeah. are the fees they're raising that no one knows about. Okay, so <laughs> uh, speaking of that, are you a state employee? I am a state employee. Okay, so you work at the office now at the Register of Deeds. Yes. So you get a, a check from the state. Uh, what umbrella do you work under? Under who? Secretary of State. Secretary yeah. of State Galvin. William right Galvin, this, yes. Right, at this moment. Yes. All right. And right now the... Uh, present gentleman uh, who's registered of deeds is retiring. He is. And that's why you want to take his position over. You seem quite knowledgeable about how. I actually have been in the office longer than Richard Howe. Oh, wow. So. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and I've worked in all the departments. I know where everything is. Okay. So, yeah, I just. And how many employees in the office? Did I ask you that question? We have 10 employees. 10 employees, okay. Now, some people might say that it's obsolete now. Things are done electronically. You scan, you know, uh, you scan deeds, you scan mortgages. Right. What do you say to that? I mean. Well, I don't think so. I mean, we do do a lot of e recording. Okay. But we do, we see people still, they come in. Um, you know, you can't do a plan. If you have a new subdivision, you can't record a plan through the computer. I um, see. You'd have to come in. They're on 18 by 24 mylar sheets. Okay. So um, those are something you'd have to come in to record. People do come in to record the documents, especially if there's been some, you know, us going back and forth because they don't have the right signatures, they don't have the right books and pages. They'll just come in. Or... Exactly. They come right in. To the office, okay. and then the public, right? Their homesteads discharges. They they come in. They're not. They don't have the software to do it from their home, which they might eventually. But yeah. right now, it's not available. Uh, where are you located? We are at 370 Jackson Street in Lowell, the new judicial center. Okay, the Carney, a Carney Judicial Center. Yeah, Cornelius. Cornelius yeah. Carney uh, Judicial Center. How do you like working there? I mean, is it better than the old place? Well, it's definitely, it's beautiful because it's brand new. Yeah. Um, it's really a nice building. The, the parking, we just actually, um, there's a new parking garage right. next door, but that's still an issue. You know, 
Well, There's I, nowhere to park unless you want to park in the garage. And how much does that cost a month? It's $130. Oh, well, so, which it isn't, people yeah. don't think it's that much, yeah. but when you worked a quarter of a mile away before for free, it affects your pay a little bit. I see. Right? Yeah. So why yeah. should we have to pay now 130 a month just to go to work where before we didn't have yeah. to? Yeah. Uh, they don't have uh, a, a deduction for people who work in the courthouse or anything no. like that? No. Well, there are other parking spaces around there, isn't there? I mean, but that, you so might presume you'd have to pay money for that too, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all paying, yeah. yeah. And then the way the city runs, if you park in a spot, you only can park there for two hours. Then you have to move your car to another zone. You mean you mean a parking meter? Yeah. It's well, only it's, for two hours. Yeah, okay. And then you have to go to, you can't just keep paying the meter. You have to move it to another zone. Another zone. Zone, which is it could be, could be downtown. All you know. Yeah, yeah. So no one really does that. But we, you can find some spots on Appleton Street. You know, I mean the shelter's right there, so a lot of people are nervous and afraid to be walking by. So most of the garages we're all parking in. Okay. But right. I mean there is a we have a garage attached to the judicial center. But it's only for judges, you know. It's safety because of that. Okay. But, so um, when you go in for jury duty, do they park at that parking lot? And how much do they pay for a day? Right. So they park. Yeah. So that, well, I will say, you'll be surprised to hear this. If you get in before nine o'clock and you're out after four, it's $8. So that's not too bad. Oh, that's not too bad. But. If the jurors, are, they get sent home at one, they might have to pay a little bit more because the way that they set it up is it's in before nine, out after four, I because see. that's the time of the employees. And there's, I think no, and there's no place to shop around there, so to speak, unless you go to Elliot's Hot Dog or something <laughs> like that, right? Right, right. Lou's right. Deli, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's just one of those things. All right, so you, um, that's what, 370 Jackson Street? 370 Jackson yeah. Street, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, um, so again, can you locate at a, a, a storefront? Can you, instead of being at the courthouse, can you, Karen, like have a a storefront like Move near the, the, office? the old Wang building and so forth? You think that you think might be able to do that rather than being downtown and worry about parking and so forth? Right. Oh yeah, I, this office could move out of the courthouse. Okay. Definitely. Okay. It doesn't have to be there. All right. Um, Richard Howe really wanted to be in with the um, new court, so okay. the office is there. It's a small office too. I see. But because we don't have a lot of public coming in right now, there it's. What floor are you on? We're on the first floor. Okay, so you cover. You cover these towns, Belricka, Carlisle, Chelmsford, Drake, Dunstable, Lowell, Tewksbury, Tingsboro, Westford, and Wilmington. You know, uh, I have a homestead. I don't want to drive downtown Lowell, right. pay $8 for parking. I want to go to a storefront near the, Wang, the old Wang building right. and just pull in there and just drop off my homestead, you know. Uh, so that's going to be something if I am elected. Okay. I'm going to try to do an outreach to different towns where I'm either going to go to senior centers, maybe I can have a few hours in each town just getting your homestead, picking up your discharges, and I even see. just talking to you in general about you know anything you want to know about the registry. If you have questions, maybe you have a new neighbor and he's parking on your grass and you there's an easement. Those are the things I think, because being downtown, nobody wants to come into that building, right. go through the metal detector to ask the questions. Right. So I would go to you, and oh, hopefully okay. I can, yeah. We'll so go you to would set up an office at the senior center someplace, you know? Right, even so just a small little desk area yeah. where I, I'm there, so, you know. A specific time exactly. of day. And that's, yep. a, no, and that's a good idea, I mean, because, I mean, uh, you know, go, going downtown, driving through that, uh, from what I understand, the new uh, roadway, overpass, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, the Lord Overpass, they used to call it. Yeah. Uh, I, I was talking to an attorney, he says he hasn't seen any change. No, the traffic-wise, you mean? Yeah, exactly. I think it's worse. You think so? Absolutely. 
Oh, well, I mean. They actually have a huge bus lane, so you're taking a lot of um, space for the traffic because of that bus lane. You can't go in it. Yeah. Do you have a, a bike lane to there, too? I think there is a bike oh, okay. lane. Yeah. Well, that's, that's important. Well, I know. Well, they just changed the speed limit in Lowell to 25. Oh, Anywhere wow. in Lowell because they want it to be a walking city. So. All right, well. We'll talk know. about after the show, and I'll tell you what I think, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So uh, we're, we're almost out of time. Is there anything you want to say in regards to running for the Registry of Deeds, Karen? Uh, are, are people helping you, people talking to you about? Yes. This? Okay. So I have a lot of... Um, support? So a lot of support from a lot of um, real estate attorneys that I've been dealing with for the past 30 years. Okay. They actually um, are looking to help me campaign and okay. whatever they can do. Are they giving you money too? Uh, uh, okay. They could I don't be, want, yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right, good, I'm sorry. But no, my family, so I have, a, um, my family's been helping. We're out there. The question people have to ask is, I have 32 years experience. If you have a question regarding your property, your homestead, do you trust someone with zero experience or do you trust a girl with 32 years experience that has been in the office All right. that knows every single thing about it? Right. Uh, I have a question. Um, let's say I have a neighbor and it's questionable about the boundary lines. How do I find out about that in regards to survey? Who did the survey? Or I, where can I get the boundary lines? Right, so we have subdivision plans. Okay. We can give you a copy of that. It's not going to show you the home sitting on it. Okay. It's going to just have a box. You might be lot eight, and then you can go from there. Okay. We would suggest you hire a land surveyor and then have him come out, and maybe you can split that fee with your neighbor if there is a question about you that. have land surveyors in your office, like business cards or we don't you know, um we used to have a okay. lot of land surveyors coming yeah. in but we don't really have too many right i'd like now. to have a land surveyor on my show oh yeah you know any that might want to be on the show right that, I, i'll have to yeah next, i know a couple yeah okay uh, next season i'm not right? talking about now right but yeah and we, i'd like to have some somebody talk about what surveying how much it costs to have a surveyor right come in, that type of thing. I know, they're all different. There's a lot, I mean, I know there's a um, gentleman who I always recommend was Leo White. He was uh, in the Lowell area. He's now moved up to um, Northampton, I believe. But he still comes down because he grew up in Lowell and he knows Lowell and he has, everyone knows he was the uh, local land surveyor. Oh, okay. So he's a great person. Uh, what about Braywith? Wasn't he, uh, uh, what was he? Um, I forget what his first name is, but is it Scott? I thought he, I thought he was a land surveyor or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Or, or maybe he was. Maybe he. He was a title research. examiner, I think. A Brad. title examiner. Yes. Yeah, a title examiner goes back what 75 years. I mean. Right, depending yeah, on right yeah, exactly, you know, they can go back as. They could, uh, your office goes back to what 16. The 16, yeah, 1600s. We have, I mean, all the handwritten deeds still there. Wow. And I just actually, so um, we just had a sale recently, and that deed was from the 1940s, which it's in one of those big old books. Right. So we still need, you know, the space in that office for these big books because we still have open titles. That, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> have these books been scanned? How far Oh, yes, they're we, scanned. Oh, oh yep. they're scanned. Everything's been scanned. Oh, everything yeah. going back to 1600 or? Yeah. Oh, wow. Who, that takes a lot of time. Right. Oh, yeah. We had. We used to have students come in for their summer help, <laughs> and they would be what down in the boring. basement. I know. But it was something we needed it done, and yeah. so the, we would hire some. Well, Dick would hire the um, summer help. Yeah, yeah. College students. Yeah, they'd yeah. Come yeah. in and they'd do all the scanning wow. for us. Yeah was great. Oh, that is cool. But I mean, there, you know, you'll come across every once in a while. There might be a mistake and it's a mistake. Just call the office.